Hi everybody. Poetry. Retort. Paul Lawrence Number. This selection is written by an African American poet. He used some archaic words. He's heavily affected by the Greek mythology or the old poetry. Let's see who is Paul Lawrence Number and what about Retort. By the way, the title Retort means to answer somebody in an angry tune. Paul Lawrence Dumber was born in 1872 and was one of the first African-American poets to achieve national prominence. The child of freed slaves from Kentucky, Dumber often wrote stories and poems about plantation life many of which were written in dialect. Despite being a fine student, Dunbar could not afford to pay for college, so he took a job as an elevator operator. In 1893, Dunbar self-published a collection of poems called Oak and Ivy to help pay the publishing costs and gain an audience for his poetry. He sold the book for a dollar to people writing in his elevator and he died in 1906. So Dunbar, in the beginning of his life, he published his first poems collection, uh, which was called Oak and Ivy on his own expense and sold it by one dollar inside his um, elevator. Background, retort, in Greek mythology, the muses were a group of goddesses who represented the arts and sciences. Currently, a muse can refer to any person who inspires an artist, writer, or a musician and who may be a uh, reoccurring focus of a subject in the work. Paul Lawrence Dunbar addresses a woman named Phyllis, a possible muse in this poem, as well as in several other poems, including Phyllis and Response. So, um, throughout this background, we discovered that Dunbar is heavily affected by the Greek mythology, and which is reflected in his language, even in the choice of language. He chose many uh, or some archaic words like thou, art, uh, phallus, and so on. Let's move. We have some new vocabularies. Some of them, uh, you will not find them easily in most um, dictionaries. Tress means a long lock of her. Uh, stray away from the correct path or correct way of doing something, like to lose the way, simply. Sore, painful, and uncomfortable because of injury, infection, or too much use. Distress, which is a feeling of extreme worry and sadness or pain. Raven hair, shiny black, attractive. Fool is the person who behaves in a silly way without thinking. These are the most strange words in this poem. The first stanza. Thou art a fool, said my head to my heart. Indeed, the greatest of fools thou art. To be led astray by the trick of a tress by smiling face or a ribbon smart and my heart was in sore distress here he used thou art it's an archaic word old words taken from the greek uh, poetry here this is uh, simply a conversation between the head and the heart the mind and the heart the head says that heart oh heart you are full the head or the mind is describing the heart to be full to be um, affected or attracted by the beauty of a lock of her, even if this lock of her was smart and nice and attractive, with uh, decorated with ribbons. Um, that's why the heart felt sad, because he felt that the head is not understanding him in a proper way. Second stanza. Then Phyllis came by, and her face was fair, the light gleamed soft on her raven hair, and her lips were blooming rosy red. 
Then my heart spoke out with a right bold air, Thou art worse than a fool, O head. But during this case of sadness, Phyllis came with her fair, beautiful face and nice hair and her beautiful lips. So when the heart saw her again, he felt confident and he started to speak to the mind in a daring, bold way. And he told him that, O oh head, you are worse than a fool, more than fool. Figures of speech. Personification is uh, used widely here. A personification is to give a human treat to a non-human creature. Thou art a fool, said my head to my heart. Then my heart spoke out with a right bold air. These two lines taken from the first and the second stanza together. Uh, the poet likens or compares his heart and his head which is meant by the mind to be like a human being who is talking and acting. As I told you, the whole poem is just like a dialogue and conversation between the head and the mind. Uh, sorry, the head and the heart. Stanzic form. Uh, we are used that uh, in prose, novels, stories, drama, and short stories, we see paragraphs as the unit or the block of it but in poetry we have stanzas instead of paragraphs there are many types of stanzic forms that which is already famous like triset couplet quatrain octave and so on stanza is a group of lines of poetry forming a unit or verse so stanza is a group of lines um, to um, be rhymed together in special ways the poem here is divided into two stanzas every stanza includes five lines we have a musical effect here i'd like to mention the first and the second verse is rhymed with the fourth and the third line is rhymed with the fifth one like if you look here my heart thou art smart in the first stanza the last words, heart, art, smart, rhyme together, first line, second, and, and fourth. And the third line with the fifth, tress, distress. Second stanza, fair, hair, air, and red rhymed with head. So the repetition of the same sound give a great musical effect, like which is happening in most songs. So here, there are a huge and nice musical effect by the repetition of uh, the same sounds at the end of the verses. The pose, uh, we have many poses here, like uh, Thou art a fool, and we have uh, many poses here. These poses or stops gives a great musical effect. Uh, short paraphrase in case you need to copy it or um, use it as an image. In the first stanza, the poet is reflecting a dialogue between his heart and his mind. The mind is describing his heart to a such fool, to lose his way and hardly affected by the beauty of Phyllis, or Phyllis's hair and beauty and smartness. The heart felt very sad and distressed with pain because of the sharp attack uh, of his heart. In the second stanza, during this case of sadness, Phyllis came with her fair, beautiful face and dark black hair, attractive, rosy lips. The poet describes her beauty to be attractive and fascinating. When his heart saw her beauty and fascination started to feel confident, and uh, started to speak boldly and dearly, and he told his mind that he is more than full. So, by the end of the poem, the heart has become um, convinced with the beauty of his uh, fellows and started to um, tell the head that you are the fool, not me. Even you are more than full. 
Let's have very short critical analysis or some questions. In the first stanza of the poem, how does the speaker's heart feel? The speaker's heart feels distressed and ashamed because of the attack of the head. Two, how does the speaker describe Fella's face? He described her face uh, to be fair and beautiful. So the speaker states that her face was fair, which is meaning uh, beautiful and attractive. What kind of air does the speaker's heart speak with? In the second stanza, the heart became or has become very strong and confident of the beauty of fellows and felt content. So he started to describe the mind to be more than full. So the speaker's heart speaks with a right, bold air, daring dialect. He told him, O head, thou art full, more than full. Head, you are more than stupid person or acting rationally. So, um, this is the end of this short, interesting poem. If you need any sort of clarifications, if you have any questions, please kindly leave it on the comments below this video. Um, see you on the next poem. Goodbye, everybody.